Head News. Head Head News, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Are you ready for the summer? I think we all are. <laughs> Five before nine nine four. AK News, another episode, and today, Avengers: Kane Dynasty, the reaction, the satisfaction. Maybe I don't know. Joining me with this quick reaction, ladies and gentlemen, special guest, good friend. I know we see you. Artist extraordinaire. Yes, Mr. Ed Watson's in the house. Good evening, sir. How are you? How you doing? I love that background. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking also with us, our fellow AK down in the streets of Brooklyn is Brooklyn in the house. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, strange sound. That's right. My Jeff Bates is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Brooklyn Bridge. He's not here yet. But My anyway. Is Dr. Strange. Now we go. <laughs> now we can now we can get into it. Um, this was very simple. Avengers, Kang Dynasty, the director was announced. Um, Daniel Cretton, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, he saw that movie. You saw, he directed that movie. You saw last summer, or last fall, I think it was in September, called Sean Chi, Sean Chi, say right. Mm -hmm. Not the Shang Legend Chi. of the Tim Ray. <laughs> We've been calling it Shang Chi for a horrible yeah, long decade. Like 30 years. This is 70 years. We would say Shang Chi, Shang Chi. But anyway, that's for <laughs> all us. That's for all of us heads. Um, my quick opinion, uh, my reaction to it, uh, a safe pick. Mm -hmm. uh, he's already in crunch with Marvel Studios and Disney. He is working on the sequel to Shang Chi and the Ten Rings. We don't know what they're gonna call it. Um, he's also developing the Wonder Man series with the writer from the Brooklyn Nine Nine show. Um, really? Yes. Yes. We reported on that. I can't news trying to stay on top of everything, but uh, there's nothing negative to say on my part. Except for very quickly, how did we get here? The Russo brothers wanted some type of guarantee that if they directed both the upcoming Avengers movies, that somehow, some way, they wanted a guarantee that what happened with the Black Widow movie would not happen with the Avengers movie. And when you look at it, at that point in time, ladies and gentlemen, there was a pandemic. They wanted some type of guarantee that those Avenger movies would hit the movie theaters regardless of where we were. I don't see how that's possible. And Disney's also a company in this country. We cannot tell the government what to do. If the government locks us down, that's it. Uh -huh. okay. There's nothing Disney, Exxon, of, of GE, of, of name the biggest, there's I, nothing they could do. I, I think what happened in Florida shows us what happened when Disney tries to tell the government what to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah you, you can't. So I'm, I'm kind of shocked that the brothers wanted some type of guarantee of habit. I understand what happened with Black Widow was bad and it was, but at that point in time, we were in a pandemic. I'm not going to beat that up. We all know who we were. We know we're not there now. The reason why the Russo, the Russo brothers can't do it now, because it's already too late. Locations and production teams and everything would have to already be established to start shooting in 2023. But anyway, my biggest reaction, I just hope that the King Dynasty movie will not be another MCU cookie cutter and i think right now ed we want to go to you your reaction i i i i i agree with you i hope it's not another cookie cutter but i think the likelihood that it is cookie cutter at this point in time is is very high because we've gotten to the point now where like like kevin feige has said it he's like he doesn't even feel like he needs to rely on the comic books anymore he can he's he's at marvel is, is a big name he can just put out movies and people will fill the seats 
So if, you know, understanding the way Hollywood executives work, they, they don't have their finger on the pulse of the fan base. No. They have no clue what the fan base wants. All they know is they do this thing and it makes a lot of money. So they keep doing that thing until it stops making money. That's why we get movies like <laughs> Batman and Robin. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> but look, look at Transformers. Every time they made a Transformers movie, it made over a billion dollars. They were terrible movies. Is it? You know, Ed, thank you. That was the most, wow, what an example of you. Yes, look at the Transformers. Michael Bay, no one said, dude, what is this? They just kept cranking them out. They kept slapping them on lunchboxes and shipping them out, just like Willy Wonka. Jeff, what do you think about this? I, I think, once again, Daniel is a reputable director. I don't think it's going to be terrible. I don't think it's going to be a Taika Waititi Ryan Reynolds, pull my finger, laugh, jokey joke. I don't think, I don't no. think anything like that. But I just don't see it being more. No, I, I I totally agree with both of you. I mean, it's it doesn't seem like it's gonna be that movie where we're gonna be like, oh wow, you know, it's not gonna have that big factor. It's gonna be like, oh okay. That's what's missing. Yeah. The wow factor. Yeah. yeah. And and I would agree. I I want to. I want a wow. Not saying that he can't deliver. That's the other thing. It's 50 50. Maybe Daniel can deliver. Maybe he can. Maybe. We, it, we can only wait and see. But, the but way did, we get a, can... did we get a wow in Shang-Chi? No. Not a, not a whole lot. Because it's, it's mainly a lot of different things. Because, you know, we all are visual. Yes. And we're, yes. We, we remember. The red and gold suit and how how crazily tan he was like he man tan mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. comic books that mm -hmm. golden brown and you know doc savage doc savage you look like doc savage. yeah exactly yeah and you know we wanted a whole lot of things we expected him to be walking around the, through the whole movie barefoot you know walking through all of china barefoot <laughs> we we wanted bruce lee we wanted a yeah. bruce lee because that's what he was fashioning. Like. You know, as for the lack of a better term, when during the seventies, when the chop sake, where they always called it the chop sake films, I'm like, to say you can't say kung fu. That's two syllables. Yeah, like, chop sake. <laughs> and you know, it's like in America, or you know, we already know America has. If you're not from here, you're looked at as funny, and even if you are from here, you're gonna still be looked at as funny. So. Yeah. <laughs> They make up their own little rules about what what is cool and what is not cool. Now, you know, because even I think even China had a problem with with this movie, and it was only because the actor himself said something about the Chinese government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Well, and, and matter of fact, China was the only only country that didn't like Black Panther. Wow. But you know. <laughs> Over the over the last year, we found out at the box office we don't necessarily need China to make a billion dollars. No, true. Mm -hmm. So that that changed the dynamic pretty much. Um, we will be introduced to Kang in the in the upcoming Ant Man film, and then where it goes from there. And apparently, Peyton Reed, who's directing the Ant Man film, it won't be Taika Waititi, Ryan Reynolds. Pull my finger. It's got to get a little bit more serious. And for that, I applaud that the Ant-Man franchise is going to have to get because of, the, because of the, the content. And I think the fact that we're dealing with Kang traveling through time, they can't do pull my finger. No. They can't do the it's, first Ant-Man was old. great. Well, well, did you did you see Loki? Because Kang was, well, I mean, it was it was a mortis, but it was Kang. Yeah, yeah. It was Kang. yeah. yeah. And I'll say this. Out, out of all of the um, out of all of the the Disney Plus Disney shows, like Loki was the one I was looking forward to the least, and so far, it's the one I like the most. Oh, it, Loki changed everything. And let me tell you something: that cameo with old Loki, he was absolute. He was excellent. Oh my God! I just tipped my hat when he went out like that. He <laughs> went out like wow. You wonder, and so now you go back to and you watch the Infinity War movie. And to think, 
Loki's telling us in that timeline that that really wasn't him that Thanos choked. Yeah. That that was a hard illusion. And at some point, he was hiding in the ship. Unbelievable. Whoever wrote that, oh, that was spot on. He's the god that, of mischief, of course. But you that expect was, that out of Loki, you know. But, but what Thanos said, there'll be no more resurrections. Well, he's not technically dead. And, and not, not for nothing. Thanos, you got the power stone. Okay, Thanos had the power stone and the space stone. He should not have known that that was an illusion. He could have actually pulled that off. There's a lot of videos out there on the tube, you guys YouTubing, who explain, not for nothing, Thanos didn't have to know that that was a hard, magical construct. Loki could have done it. But anyway, that Loki show, is that's probably gonna change things anyway. But Daniel Cretton, um, that's my opinion. I hope we get something more. I really want that wow factor. You know, you know, guys, I really, yeah. you know, you want to go to the movie theater, you want people coming out of the movie telling you, ooh, ooh, you know, you like that excitement. I guess that's a whole movie going experience. Everybody likes that. And um, let's just see. Um, let's just see, uh, you know, will he direct Secret Wars? I don't know. That's still big. That's Secret yeah. Wars and Ed. Secret Wars is everybody. Yeah, yeah. But they got they got to introduce like the the Fantastic Four and X Men back by, by then too. Everybody has got to be in that movie. Can get the that movie? I don't want to see no cloud. No. Ooh. No Ooh. <laughs> That I just, you are I so bad. <laughs> I mean, you, we, I wouldn't have been mad if you did a big CGI head of Galactus. Wouldn't have been mad at all. Because we understand, like, you know, you had, what, wait, who was the voice for Silver Surfer? Was it Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah, yeah Lawrence Fishburne. He was perfect, too. Yeah. Morpheus. He made it work. But, it, I mean, it, but, come on. When I saw that cloud crap. I'm like, that's what we get. <laughs> oh, and before we go, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, yes, AK News will acknowledge we know also that the reason why we will not have the X Men until 2025 is because of previous Fox contractual agreements. And did you guys know Magneto was supposed to be in? Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, Michael Fassbender himself. Really? But the reason why he's, he wasn't shown had nothing to do with Marvel don't want to use him in the future as Magneto. It was the fact that they had to cut the movie down. So okay. maybe Fassbender is coming back. And if Fassbender comes back, I have no problem with that. Yeah. He's now. He's young Magneto. I don't think I'm saying outside of first class. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but the, th the thing the thing about Magneto, he's tricky because if you're gonna have Magneto in current day, he's gonna be like over a hundred years old because he he was a Holocaust survivor that's stamped onto yeah. his. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Unless his mutant powers somehow alter. But anyway, you know we can go speculate. Oh. But just the fact that we can't get any of the X Men until 2025, that should tell the public. Calm down. Anyone saying Wolverine or no, you can't, you, you don't know because the contract said whoever played the character while they were with Fox has to play the character. And Kevin and Kevin and the team don't want to, maybe they don't want that person who did it before. Yeah. That's fair. Maybe we want to go in another direction. Not saying that we were never going to use Hugh Jackman. So Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, he was great for what he did. Time to move on. Giancarlo as Professor X. Okay. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. Because I see him on, what's I see on my Mandalorian? I mean, they had this guy playing Red Skull, Doctor Doom, Magneto. I mean, the, take it easy. Everybody should just. I, I love the actor. I love, I love the roles. He, I mean, oh. Gus was, is probably his greatest role. Yeah. But uh, it's Professor X, and you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't. You can't. Some actors can't play all roles. Like you, 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 you. Danny DeVito is Conan the Barbarian. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> well, well, I cry. What the hell is this? 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be though for the penguin. He played the penguin already. Oh, oh. Yeah. But yo, aren't, I thought they were using uh, they were talking about using Clifton Powell as a uh, Professor X. You know, uh, you know, that as 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 me and you agree, the same four people can't play all the roles in Hollywood. Just yeah. because somebody's yeah. hot at the moment, that doesn't mean that they're good for this role. They they usually do it with. Uh, the ladies of Hollywood, they cast this one in every role. What's so funny is it did it didn't happen to Gal Gadot. What happened? Gal Gadot's not getting every role because she was Wonder Woman. So, and I disagree. If we had a different Magneto, I can go along with that. I hope we get a newcomer for Wolverine. I hope it's someone who whose name comes before the character. I hope it's someone who. Let's see how good a Wolverine he is. Not see how good of him being a Hollywood star he is. I mean, he's that, gonna be that regardless. That you goes know? back to Hollywood executives not really knowing what audiences want. They don't have the finger on that pulse. All they know is this guy is hot. He's he's been in a lot of movies. If Let's we put, put him in, in there, he's gonna make money, even though he might be terrible for the role. Exactly. Well, this event just came down. See, just the fact that. The high evolutionary is a person of color. I think that guy's a great actor. Who's it? playing a high evolutionary? Wasn't he the guy who played Luke Cage's brother in the TV series? Would he have played a high evolutionary? If that's the case, and that creates a conflict of. Well, remember the Netflix series, the contracts are over. Netflix gave it away. I mean, Netflix ended their relationship with Marvel. But. I don't know. See, like when when the Netflix series came out, it was my understanding that that was still officially part of the MCU, yeah. and I, I know that they had also signed contracts to transfer over movies, two movies at some point, if Marvel had decided to do that. So if you're going to take characters from that and then start just recasting them back into the MCU as different characters, it just feels weird. You know what I'm saying? Like like for example, like um, uh, Josh Brolin doing Thanos and doing. Cable is kind of a different story because that was Fox and it was the, at the time that was Fox and that was the MCU, two different things. But though the, the Netflix, even though, yeah, contractually it might be separate or adjacent or whatever, it still felt like the same thing. And at the time it was marketed as the same thing. This is part of the MCU. You watch, you watch Daredevil and, and all those shows and they talk about the battle over New York. And I mean, Okay, the brother that's what playing... Doesn't him... Yeah, that we're going to be in new playing, She-Hulk, right? Yeah. yeah. The brother that's playing the high evolutionary... Chudwiggy Ijua. Now... Damn. Now, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's... Thank you. Thank you. Um, he looks like he... I've seen him in some other things before. And uh, I'm going to... You know, we're going to... We're going to do a deep dive in him later, but just the fact that um, Kang is obviously who Kang is, and we think that uh, he's great. And uh, you, you guys watch that Netflix show with him and Idris, the Western. It's kind of good. It, it really is good. Yeah, yeah, I like him. But this this, this, this uh, actor, whom I've seen before, I just can't pronounce his name right. We're not going to chop it up. But just the fact that he's playing Kang, He's playing the high evolutionary, who's not necessarily a bad guy. The high evolutionary just wants to keep advancing species. Now, I know that might sound like a, uh, I'm sure the PETA people would have a problem with him, but then that's why he's yeah, in. The new man is all animals, so you know. That's yeah, the new, yeah, the new man, yeah. So this, this, this looks good, but that's on the Guardian side. But as far as Daniel and the Kang Dynasty, I wish him the best of luck. I hope we get something that people like me, you, and Ed cannot predict. That we can basically already forecast the whole movie and know what it looked like. We want some ooh and ah moments. Because uh -huh. I'm, I'm really was sitting here just looking at a couple of other um, videos too, and I'm, I'm really trying to picture. Um, Samuel L. Jackson as the unseen. That might work, cause it, I mean he's got to show up in that some kind of way. 
you know, because the whole thing with him with the Infinity Formula, the, the watchers are now here. There it is, I'm about to say it. The Infinity Formula for all you hit non heads. Nick Fury took the Infinity Formula. Look it up. Find out what that means. That means he will be here for a long time. He is a human asset. But anyway. Yeah, Nick Fury. Yeah, I mean, because the, the original Nick Fury, you know, he was in World War II fighting right next to Cap. Wow. Then S.H.I.E.L.D. was formed right along yeah. with, you know, uh, Colonel Carter and the whole nine. And, and nobody knows it. Yo, this guy's still around. Uh huh. <laughs> Hello. But anyway, Daniel Creighton will be taking over the Avengers King Dynasty. We wish him the best of luck. <laughs> I need a big wow. I need a big why. Why? It's an Avengers movie. Yeah. Well, it's the an Avengers movie. What's that? With, 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 with Phase Four, Disney's very aware that Phase Four is losing money. Thank you. I've seen reports of it all over the place. They know it's well, losing money. That's why, that's why they ended it so abruptly. And they, they're like, no, no, we're into Phase Five now. Love and Thunder cost him $100 million. It will not break. Cost more than that. $100 million. Mm -hmm. They haven't even gotten into the merchandising. How much of that merchandise is going to sit on shelves? Oh yeah, we we talked about this. That sideshow collectible Thor: Love and Thunder doll. Forget it. Nobody wants it. Mm -hmm. But the movie did bad, so nobody wants it. And that also means no pop funk dolls either. <laughs> All that oh, Christmas is ruined. I can't live without the Funko Pop. Can't live without the Funko Pop. We started that first. I can't remember. I remember. We always have Funko Pop. But anyway. Gentlemen, thank you for this quick reaction. We appreciate it. We will be back to you as soon as possible, as soon as everybody can get their summer together and get our schedule together. Re a shout out to our girl, Mandy Girl Smiles. Miss you, bud. Miss you, bub. And that's, that's it for me, gentlemen. Thank <laughs> All right.